hello and thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. Now I've got three different embossing techniques for you. Hopefully you've not seen these before. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to create a gorgeous marbled effect with your embossing powders, how to create this kind of a water effect, water and bubble effect as well. And also on this one, I've got some wonderful texture in there that I'm going to show you how to do as well. Really easy, all you're going to need is a selection of embossing powders. Ideally, for most of these, you're going to want to go with some that are more opaque, that don't have the translucency once they're melted. So things like the Distress Glaze, I'm only going to be using this for the water one. The other two, I'm using really solid colors. You're also, of course, going to need uh, an embossing ink. You're going to need some water as well. Uh, I've got something to move the, paper, uh, the enamel around with, the embossing powder once it's uh, melted, and that's a pokey tool. And then of course, some paper or cardstock to do the techniques onto. So let's get started first of all with the marble technique. Now, as you can see, I've zoomed in really close for this today, just so you can really see what's going on and what's happening. I'm going to do a lot of uh, heat embossing with my tool. It's very noisy. So I will be speeding up those areas and uh, taking the sounds down for you as well. So uh, I'll only try to talk whilst I'm not using the heat gun. So the first thing we're going to do is start layering up our color. So for this, you want to do as many layers as possible and as thick as an emboss as possible. So this is probably going to be five or six layers of embossing powder. Now that sounds like a lot, but actually, um, if you've had embossing powder pots in the past, there's a good chance you've probably not ever used one all the way up, unless it's a clear, a white, or perhaps a black. So I'm going to go in, first of all, this is a Ranger embossing powder. This one is called Tea Rose. It's a beautiful coral orange color. So I'm just going to try and keep myself clean here. So just clear embossing powder, first of all, and then the Tea Rose color. And I'm going to heat set this. There, like I say, you want as many layers as possible for this technique. So I'm just going to keep going over. So I'm going to do two or three of the tea rows. Uh, another thing that's handy for you to have as well is a spare piece of paper for you to tip your powder onto while you're doing uh, the same colour over and over again. And also a pair of tweezers just for holding your paper still or your cardstock still so you don't burn your fingers. So let's just go straight back over. Now that's cooled down with the embossing pad, just pressing that into there. And let's add another layer of the tea rose embossing powder and melt that. Once that's cooled, we want to do our next layer and our next color is going to be a contrasting color and I'm going to use this really bright blue embossing powder. Now this is from Rare Earth, that brand. I'm not sure if they still do this. It's an old embossing powder, it still works perfectly, but it's really opaque, uh, not translucent at all. So you can really see where the color's going down. So again, press over with your clear ink. And let's do two layers of the blue. Okay, so at the moment I've got four layers there of enamel. It's really starting to get quite thick, which is lovely. Now you need to choose your top coat. Now the top coat is going to be um, the one that's going to show the most, so the most in focus. And I'm going to use a lovely sort of platinum gold for that. That's from Sizzix. So again, go in with your clear embossing ink, as long as this has dried, and do exactly the same. So I'm just going to do one layer of this. There. So now we've got our three layers. Now you want to take something like a palette knife or a pokey tool or something like that um, in your dominant hand and reheat this from above using your non-dominant hand. So what we're going to do is heat this up and once you see it starts melting, so you can start to see the surface move and you think you've melted through all of the layers, uh, then you can start scraping some or, or just pulling some of the melted embossing powder around with your pokey tool and I would suggest doing it 
in lines, almost like a wood grain pattern there and swirling a little as you go. A little tip for you here is just to pop a little bit of double sided tape onto your glass mat and onto the cardstock. That's just going to help you uh, move that around while your ha other hand is free to hold the heat gun. And once you're happy with your swirling and your dragging, you can now heat this all over and just allow it to settle. It's just going to finish it off. so pretty we've got hints of the uh, orange the coral color coming in from underneath we've also got the the teal blue that's kind of gone a little bit uh, more paler in color uh, as soon as that's dry which shouldn't take a few minutes you can cut that out and there's our first technique the marbled embossing powder so you can see you'll get a different effect every single time but it's so pretty so let's move on to the next technique now this one is really good fun as well so this one is about creating a water effect background. So we're going to do the same. We're going to layer some embossing powder. And I'm going to start this time, rather than with an opaque embossing powder, with a distress glaze, because this one kind of goes a little bit clear, a little bit translucent with a hint of color. So I'm using speckled egg. It's kind of the closest to a, a water effect that I've found within the stress range. So just one layer of that, and then I'm going to heat set it. Okay, now what we want is a thin layer of clear embossing powder over the top of this. So uh, that's white, there's my clear, so I'm going to use Wow for this one. Like I say, the brands don't matter, embossing powder will all react very similarly. Um, I have my favorite brand, so Sizzix, Wow. Um, obviously the Distress Glazes are brilliant as well. Uh, I love Ranger ones, um, Cosmic Shimmer they're all my favorite to be honest I can't choose between them so a layer of clear embossing powder directly over that glaze a nice thick layer as best you can you can do one or two layers of this I'll just do one to show you the technique so it's not too time consuming and of course we're going to just heat set this again Okay, now for the magic for this one, we're going to take some water. It doesn't have to be in a spray bottle at all because all we're going to do is use the nozzle and you're just going to flick some water from there onto here. But first of all, we need to heat this up. So we do need to loosen up uh, that top layer, make sure the uh, enamel, the liquid embossing powder is all starting to flow again and melted. So let's just very quickly add a little bit of tape again underneath my paper just to hold it still. It's just going to help me while I'm moving things around. So pop that on top of there. Okay, so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to splash some water into that enamel, okay? Just cold water and just flick droplets. Once I've got a nice even splattering of droplets there, I'm going to now heat this up again. So leaving the water where it is and just put heat on it and work slowly around and you'll start to see what will happen is the, the heat and the water it all reacts and creates these darkened droplets around the water. So I think what's actually happening is the water is preventing the embossing enamel underneath from melting, but we're melting through the top layer more around the water. That's what I think is happening, but it's a really cool effect. So watch this. There we go. Now hopefully you can see on the camera there where we've got a little bit of a mottled effect. Now you want to just release your um, paper from the mat. Give that chance to dry as well. 
you can really see that gorgeous effect running through there just give that chance to cool down and dry make sure that's not going to stick to your tissue and then just use your tissue just to lift up off the excess water now you can repeat that a number of times you can really see the effect there if you keep repeating that you're going to end up with something that looks absolutely beautiful like that isn't that gorgeous so this one was done on a slightly thinner paper um, the thickness of the paper may actually affect the amount of the sort of bubbles that you get but definitely have a play with this technique for really fun background and the last technique I want to show you is uh, creating kind of aged metal effects now this is actually going to be two techniques in one here so I'm going to uh, first of all create this metal panel just by embossing a block of uh, kind of black enamel first so the black embossing powder okay I'm going to do one layer of that then I'm going to do two layers of the platinum over the top okay and then we'll get on with the rest of the technique there now the first thing I'm going to do here is continue heating this and I'm going to continue heating it until all three layers of enamel are heated and they start to mix together and I'm going to just encourage that by twisting and turning my paper to allow gravity to pull the the uh, loose the melted embossing powder around and just start mixing those colors so we start to see a bit of the black from underneath okay now I want to keep this warm as long as possible and I'm going to bring my water back in and this time I'm going to flick cold water cold water droplets as hard as possible onto the melted enamel so heat that up first and continue heating it whilst the water hits it you can take it away for just a second let the water hit it cause an indentation and then carry on and keep doing that until you've got some beautiful texture built up on top of that uh, I keep calling it enamel but melted embossing powder for this technique you just need to work on one small area at a time I would say and this size just a quarter of it at a time and then move on to another section because otherwise another section will cool and harden before you get round to heat all of it Now one other thing you can also do is simply spray this really close melt it and then spray your water really close and the pressure from the spray will help to add some kind of speckles and some um, roughness to the surface beautiful okay just allow that to cool for a moment now what happened is with the pressure of the water not only were you adding indentations and texture into the surface of the embossing powder but you're also moving some of that top layer away and revealing the black from underneath so uh, now that's cool I can just dab up the water and look at that we are left with a fantastic very vintage old metal effect so let's just trim this out I always think these look better once you've trimmed the excess away from the edge but it's definitely important to have an edge whilst you're working on the paper with the embossing powder because you need something to hold on to that's not going to so you don't burn your fingers with the heat gun but look at that can you see that texture in there I will get some nice close-up photos of this here for you but look at that isn't that absolutely gorgeous so now you can be uh, using that as a faux metal so there's the cardstock that's what it was before and now you've got this foam metal so there's another one where I've gone uh, even deeper with the the black coming through but again you've got the texture in there then we've got our water effect that we created really beautiful and then we've got our marbled effect which you can of course do with absolutely any color of embossing powder Thank you so much for watching. If you like tutorials like this and you want to follow me on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button and I will be back very soon with a brand new video for you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.